Naples. Hello and a very good evening. You're watching the news tonight with me, Frank Pereira. Let's start with the headlines. Centre approves 2% interest subsidy on farm loans and additional 3% for timely repayments. Move aimed at providing huge relief to debt-ridden farmers. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan meets families of the farmers killed in police firing in Mansoor, gives assistance of 1 crore rupees to family of one of the deceased. Noisy scenes in Tamil Nadu Assembly. Opposition DMK members evicted from the House after raising the issue of alleged horse trading of AIA DMK MLAs. Wholesale price inflation index falls to a five month low of 2.17% in May. WPI food index decreases from 2.9% in April to 0.15% in May. And six people killed and over 30 injured in a massive blaze in central London. Hundreds of firefighters work through the night to rescue people trapped inside. Well, the Union Cabinet on Wednesday cleared the interest subvention scheme for farmers. With this decision, the farmers will continue to get short-term loans of up to 3 lakh rupees as a subsidized interest rate of 7% and prompt repairs will get at 4% as the government extended the subsidy to banks for 2017-18. The cabinet has approved the total expenditure of 20,339 crore rupees in the current financial year. This decision by the union cabinet comes at a time when farmers across the country are protesting to get their farm loans waived. Farmers from Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh are among the worst hit earlier. As an interim measure, the Reserve Bank of India had asked the banks to continue giving the discount on interest on short-term crop loans during the current fiscal. Well, eight days after five farmers died in police firing in Mansoor in Madhya Pradesh, Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan met the families of those who lost their lives. The Chief Minister gave the families compensation of 1 crore rupees each and assured of all assistance. Congress leader Jyotiraditya Sindhya also began a 72-hour protest in Bhopal demanding loan waiver. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan on Wednesday met families of the farmers killed in the police firing last week. Giving them a compensation of 1 crore each, he assured them that their loans will be waived off. संवेदना प्रकट करने मैं आया था उनसे चर्चा हुई किसानों की तकलीफें भी सुन रहा हूं चर्चा भी कर रहा हूं बातचीत भी कर रहा हूं कई उपाय प्रदेश सरकार ने किए हैं वो भी सबकी जानकारी में आ रहे हैं शांति सद्भाव रहे और किसान आगे बढ़े उसके लिए हर संभव प्रयास किए जाएंगे अहेर ऑफ द चीफ मिनिस्टर्स विजिट टू बदवान विलेज इन मंसौर डिस्ट्रिक्ट फैमिलीज ऑफ द डिसीज्ड फार्मर्स डिमांडेड स्ट्रिक्ट एक्शन अगेंस्ट द पीपल रिस्पांसिबल फॉर देयर किलिंग्स सख्त सख्त कार्रवाई की जाए साहब उन्होंने बताया कि हमारे बच्चे को किसान संघ रैली चल रही थी निकल रही थी उसमें बताया उनको पुलिस वालों ने ले जाके थाने में ले जाके उनको इतना पीटा इतना पीटा साहब उनके दोनों हाथ पैर तोड़ दिए उनके कुत्ते की तरह मारा उनको न तो पानी पिलाया पानी के लिए उनकी जान निकल गई साहब उन्होंने पुलिस वालों ने जान ले ली उनकी साहब बाकी सभी किसानों की जो भी मरे उन सबका यही कहना है की मतलब उनको कार्यवाही की जाए पैसे से सबसे पहले उसको निकाले क्योंकि इतनी ऑथोरिटी सीएम ने दे नहीं रखी कि आप गोलियां चलाओ ये करो ये करोड़ रुपए की राशि करे बैंक में जमा कर आई जाएगा अच्छा अच्छा हाँ और बैंक माफ कर दूंगा Meanwhile, Congress party leader Jyotiraditya Sindhya, who was prevented from visiting Mansoor, started a 72-hour satyagraha in Bhopal. He demanded a loan waiver for the state farmers who are holding protests since June 1st, demanding better prices for their produce. Mansoor emerged as the epicenter of the farmers' agitation last week after five farmers were killed in the agitation that turned violent. While the district has remained calm since then, three farmers have reportedly committed suicide in the state in the last 24 hours, taking the number of farmer deaths in the last two weeks to nine. With Ravindya Sharon, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television.
Well, after protests in Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, farmers in Uttar Pradesh also have demanded a loan waiver. While the three-month-old Yogi Adityanath government announced a farm loan waiver in its first cabinet meeting, farmers alleged that the current procedure for identifying farmers threatens to leave out a large chunk that faced acute agrarian distress. Farmer leaders also said that they will participate in the protest march at Jantar Mantar on Thursday. The state government has accused the opposition of instigating farmers for political benefit. माफी की बात क्यों कर दे कब तक कर्ज माफ करते रहोगे वो पैसा कहीं न कहीं पूरे जनता का है वो अच्छे काम में लगे क्यों किसानों का कर्ज माफ करने की बात कहकर सत्ता में लोग आ जाते हैं हम चाहते हैं कर्ज माफ करने की स्थिति न आए आज मान लीजिए अगर योगी सरकार पहली बैठक में उन्होंने निर्णय लिया और तुरंत हम सोच रहे थे कि धान की रोपाई में ये फैसला लेकर इम्प्लीमेंट हो जाएगा गांव में किसान जो है अपने आप को ठगा महसूस कर रहा दिन रात मेहनत करने के बाद एक उम्मीद थी भाजपा से कि बड़ा अच्छा काम करेंगे ये कुछ जो हमारी उम्मीदें थी वो खत्म हो गई हैं और हम पूरी तरीके से अपने आप को ठगे हुए महसूस करके और सोच रहे हैं कि आगे हमको करना क्या एक उत्तर प्रदेश की पहली सरकार है जो निर्णय लिया गया है कि किसान है उनके कर्ज माफ करे जाएंगे और वो हमारे कैबिनेट का पहला निर्णय था जो विपक्ष है उनको कोई मुद्दा बनाने का है क्योंकि देश भर में कुछ ऐसे मुद्दे उन लोग ने बनाए हैं और राहुल गांधी अब समझ भी आ गया है कि कांग्रेस और राहुल गांधी खुद ही दंगे करवाते हैं किसानों के और किसान आंदोलन में शिरकत करते हैं तो वो इन लोग की एक है यहाँ पे समाजवादी पार्टी बहुजन समाज पार्टी ये सब लोग इसी प्रकार की राजनीति करते हैं Well, days after the BJP formed a three-member committee to build consensus on presidential polls, opposition party leaders met earlier today to discuss their strategy for the polls. The meeting was attended by 10 members of the subgroup that was formed after all 17 opposition party leaders met a few days ago to form a united opposition ahead of the polls. However, no names were discussed in today's meeting. Meanwhile, the BJP's three-member committee will meet Congress President Sonia Gandhi and uh, CPIM leader Sitaram Yachuri on Friday to discuss probable candidates. The filing of nominations for the July 17th election to the top constitutional post began today. उनकी तरफ से शुरू हुई है उन्होंने रूलिंग पार्टी ने अपोजिशन के नेताओं को कंटेक्ट शुरू कर दिया है अगले कुछ दिनों में इस सब कमेटी की दोबारा मीटिंग होगी तो शायद उसमें हम चर्चा कर पाएंगे well, chaos in the Tamil Nadu Assembly today led to all members of the main opposition party, the DMK, being forced out of the building. The DMK members faced the action after they tried to raise the cash for vote controversy in the House. Leader M.K. Stalin and 86 others took to the streets and blocked the traffic, which later resulted in their arrest. <laughs> The Tamil Nadu Assembly witnessed noisy scenes on Wednesday when opposition DMK members raised the issue of alleged horse trading of AIA DMK MLAs. DMK members raised the issue despite being denied permission to do so. <laughs> Speaker P. Dhanapal disallowed a discussion as sought by the leader of opposition, M.K. Stalin, stating that the matter was sub judice. He then ordered the eviction of all DMK members from the House as they resorted to sloganeering. Soon after the eviction, Stalin and other DMK MLAs blocked roads outside the assembly. They were later detained by the police. The opposition has now demanded dissolution of the Kek Palani Swami government. See, we have already raised this issue on the floor of the assembly. That is why we sought a 
voting, I mean secret ballot. That was uh, totally de denied and we are now the matter is pending in the court. All this we have already told the people and the press also. So whatever say, we said is true. So the court, uh, court should take cognizance of this and render justice. DMK members tried to raise the matter related to a sting operation which was carried out by two news channels. The sting operation showed an AIA DMK MLA making some claims of payoffs to ruling party MLAs ahead of the trust vote that was sought and won by the Palani Swami government on February 18th. The DMK has termed the incident shameful and said that the state assembly should discuss the matter. Tamil Nadu's ruling party has been roiled in controversy since the death of J. Jai Lalita. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, moving on now, the Gorkha Janmukti Morcha protest led a shutdown in the Darjeeling Hills entered the third day on Wednesday. The GJM with the other hill parties took out rallies in several areas demanding a separate Gorkha land. No violent incident was reported, even as GJM chief Bimal Gurung lashed out at the police, saying that they are working like the TMC Kada. While the opposition, CPIM and Congress launched an attack on the ongoing situation in the hills and called for an all-party meet, the center is also monitoring the developing situation in Darjeeling. On Tuesday, it sought a report from the West Bengal government on the law and order situation in the hills. कल गोरखालयन हो जाएगा उस भी उस समय भी मिल जाएगा लेकिन जाति उन मुक्ति पहले होना चाहिए हम लोग चाहता हूँ और दो चार जगह में ऐसा हो रहा है जहाँ पर पूरा तानाशाही का वो रणनीति लेकर काम कर रहा है और उसमें थोड़ा विवाद हो रहा है और सभी जगह अभी बंद है ऑफिस बगारा बगारा बैंक सब बने हैं और हम लोग नॉन कोऑपरेशन मोमेंट हम लोग कर रहा हूँ ऑल पार्टी मीटिंग होना चाहिए और खास कर ट्राइपार्टेड बैठक करके केंद्र सरकार राज्य सरकार दोनों की जिम्मेदारी है सीमावर्ती इलाका है और सिर्फ पुलिस से सिर्फ लाठीचार्ज से सिर्फ जोर जुलूम से ये मामला हल होने वाला नहीं है इन ऑर्डर टू ह्यूमिलेट द गोरखा जनमुक्ति मोर्चा well, at least 20 people died as torrential monsoon showers hit northeastern states since Tuesday. Flash flooding was reported in parts of Assam and Mizoram. 12 people died in Guwahati alone while several people are missing. Eight persons were killed in Mizoram. Hundreds of houses were washed away across Mizoram. The heavy showers are due to the formation of a low-pressure area in the region. It was due to this weather system that the Brahmaputra and tributary rivers swelled, causing flooding. This low-pressure area is expected to continue bringing heavy spells of rain over Assam and Mizoram for the next 48 hours. National Highway 54, which links Mizoram with Assam, has been cut off at several places due to landslides. Flooding has also been reported in southern Hyderabad. Water logging was reported from a lot of places in the city. Residents were forced to wade through waist-high waters to travel small distances. The Met Department says that the country is likely to receive higher monsoon rainfall than previously forecast, as concern over the El Nino weather condition has eased. At present, the weather conditions that have prevailed have shown that the uh, southwest monsoon has touched the Rail Sima on 7th June. And the onset of the monsoon over Rail Sima and some parts of uh, South Coastal Happy had occurred over, uh, had occurred on uh, 7th June, and it slightly advanced into some parts of Rail Sima by 11th uh, June. Inflation based on the wholesale price index fell to a five-month low of 2.17% in May on the back of softening vegetable prices. The WPI-based inflation stood at 3.85% in April 2017. The WPI food index increased or rather decreased from 2.9% in April to 0.15% in May. The WPI for the month is based on the new base year 2011-12, which was revised last month from 2004-05, with then aim to reflect the macroeconomic picture more accurately. Well, here's a roundup of the other news from across uh, the country in Nationwide. The Pakistani army on Wednesday violated the ceasefire twice by shelling mortars and firing from small arms along the LOC, 
in Kashmir's Rajouri and Poonch districts. The firing was retaliated by the Indian Army. There were, however, no casualties or damage on the Indian side. It was the 12th ceasefire violation in the last four days. Indian naval ships have reached Australia for uh, OS Index 17, a joint bilateral maritime exercise this week. The exercise aims to increase interoperability and cooperation between the two countries. This will be the second edition of the exercise after the first one at Vishakhapatnam in 2015. The Delhi High Court on Wednesday rejected the bail plea of alleged middleman Sukesh Chandrasekhar in the AIADMK2 Leaves a Symbol case. The Delhi police claimed that Sukesh had many cases pending against him. Earlier, another accused in the case, AIADMK leader TTV Dinakaran, was granted bail by the Supreme Court on June 1st. Well, it's time for a short break now, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. What we are witnessing in Darjeeling, is it a political battle of supremacy? This is not about any ego. This is about bringing peace and development. Why is there a general perception which has been built on Mamta Banerjee government that she tries to appease the minority? She tries to appease the people of Bengal. If anyone has a problem with that, then they can take a walk. A strange kind of a consolidation, a Hindu consolidation versus the minority consolidation. Does that worry TMC? Mamta Day's face, what you see is what you get. I'm afraid the BJP, they are double-faced. Watch to the point with Parliamentary Party leader of Trinamool Congress, Derek O'Brien, only on Rajya Sabha Television. Harappan sites are a treasure trove of sophisticated pottery. These creations show tremendous advances by the potter's wheel. Creations like the perforated jar, the copper axe, the trizzle and knives astound even present-day archaeologists. Figurines depicting yoga poses, chess pieces display a complexity unsurpassed even by later day civilizations, all of which make the Harappan civilization truly unique. Welcome back. You're watching Rajas about Television. Well, at least six people were killed and 74 injured after a massive fire ripped through a 24-story tower block in West London on Wednesday. The Metropolitan Police said it is not yet known how many people are missing and the death toll is expected to rise. Meanwhile, the cause of the fire is still unknown. It was an inferno. It was like something out of a film. All, all bits were flying off of the flats, all the, all the plastic cladding was coming off. I, could, I was looking up and I could see little kids at the windows banging, screaming, flashing lights. So it, was, it, was, it, was, it was like something out of a out of a horror movie. Um, yeah, there was smoke everywhere, literally everywhere. There was, there was people downstairs, there was bits of the block, um, the cladding falling off the block, that was on people fire. People screaming. People screaming. Residents of Grenfell Building, which erupted in flames in the wee hours of Wednesday, describing the horrific scenes they witnessed. During the night, Eyewitnesses saw lights flashing in the top floors of the block, probably signals that they needed rescuing. Residents are also said to have tossed their children to safety. The fire which broke out at around 1 a.m. engulfed almost every floor from the 2nd to the 24th of the high-rise tower block in North Kensington, West London. Plumes of black and grey smoke billowed high into the air hours after the blaze broke out. Most of the building has now been reduced to a blackened hulk with debris raining down several blocks away. I heard some people said help from the 20 floors, 19, they are flashing the, the lights and now they stop. I don't know what happened to them, if they're safe or not. But 
was really horrible fire I, I never see in my life. While the police have cordoned off the immediate area of the estate and surrounding streets, hundreds of people who were evacuated continue to wander the streets in shock. Those who fled said that no fire alarm sounded, sprinklers failed and straightways were blocked. Residents also claimed that many concerns over the safety of the building had been raised with the council but to no effect. We repeatedly reported concerns to the tenant management organisation of the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea including fire safety concerns which were not investigated during the regeneration works. Hundreds of firefighters worked through the night to rescue those trapped inside and to put out the fire. London Fire Brigade said the fire engulfed all floors from the second to the top of the block which contained 130 apartments. The Mayor of London and the London Fire Commissioner have declared the fire a major incident. We have got a structural engineer who in conjunction with my urban search and rescue advisor is monitoring the stability of the building. They are still working very hard. Uh, we rescued large numbers of people from inside the building very early on across a range of different floors. I've spoken to crews who have been up as far as the 19th and 20th floor. So we've got crews continuing to work very hard in there at the moment. The Metropolitan Police has set up an emergency number for anyone concerned about friends or family. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the U.S. House of Representatives Majority Whip Steve Scalis was one among many people who were injured in a shooting incident near Washington. The gunman allegedly opened fire on Republican members of Congress during a baseball practice. Alabama Representative Mo Brooks said that the assailant was armed with a rifle and appeared to be a white male. 50 to 100 shots were reportedly fired on the Republicans uh, who were holding an early morning practice ahead of a game against Democrats this week. Republican Senator Jeff Flake said TV Scalis uh, was shot in the left hip. In a Twitter message, U.S. President Donald Trump said Scalis was badly injured but will fully recover. Steve Scalis is uh, the third highest ranked member of the Republican leadership in the House. He's a representative from Louisiana. Trump said in a statement that... Uh, he and Vice President Mike Pence were monitoring developments closely. Uh, two of the Capitol Police were shot. Uh, one uh, staffer who dove into the dugout um, with a leg wound and we got somebody's belt and put it around there to stop the bleeding. So we were tending to him as well as trying to keep down away from the shooter. So, and then uh, somebody was shot in the chest as well. So I think six total, including the shooter. Were shot. Well, let's now take a look at some more developments from across the globe in Global Buzz. The debt toll in the Bangladesh landslide rose to 152, while Rangamati Hill District was the worst affected with 105 deaths. Bandarban and Chittagong reported the rest of the casualties. Many of the victims reportedly belong to tribal groups who live in makeshift structures along the hills. Many people are still reported missing. Tropical storm Calvin flooded a refinery of the Mexican state oil company in the southern state on Tuesday, after which authorities briefly stalled the operations. Floodwaters filled parts of the refinery and installations will, while staff work to clear debris along, also causing damage to the roads and neighboring cities. Residents had to evacuate some towns, however, no deaths or injuries were reported. American student Otto Wombia, who, released, uh, from, who was released from North Korea, arrived in the U.S. after being held captive for 17 months. Wombia was uh, sentenced to prison for 15 years with hard labor for alleged anti-state acts. The University of Virginia student reportedly fell ill after botulism and later lapsed into coma in 2016 after taking a sleeping pill. The victim arrived at Cincinnati Municipal Lunken Airport on Tuesday after being medically evacuated. A joint investigation team summoned Pakistan's Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's younger brother Shahbaz Sharif in the Panama Gate graft case. The six-member panel will record Sharif's statement on June 17th. 
Tariff's sons were questioned last month over alleged improper business dealings in London. Prime Minister Sharif has been asked to appear before the JIT tomorrow. Moving on to some sports-related news now, where Sports Minister Vijay Goel on Wednesday felicitated French Open mixed doubles winner Rohan Bopanna in the national capital. Bopanna became the fourth Indian to win a Grand Slam title in Paris last week. Praising Bopanna's uh, dedication while playing the sport for the last 17 years, Goel said that he had made the country proud. Both also discussed the promotion of tennis among youth in the country. On June 8th, Bopanna joined Leander Pace, Mahesh Bhupati and Sanya Mirza in the elite club of Indian Grand Slam winners. Well, that's it on this newscast. Good night.